Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Uh, today we are going to show you a clear example how Muslims, when they try to uh, uh, debate with the Christians, how they are very selective and how they are dishonest. In the same time with their dishonesty, we are always use you know able to use their dishonesty against them to prove Islam to be false. Uh, one of you sent me this video, and this video is speaking supposedly about Jesus, he agree uh, with killing children. So let us hear a little bit. And I will show you how this man, who, you know, I mean, all of them, they were not even there to say hello to me. They are a bunch of cowards. And that's why they try to debate, uh, you know, young uh, Christians, 20 years old, 19 years old. Uh, so he will say that Jesus, he agree with killing children. Let us see what he's talking about. We do not believe that he's the best example for mankind. We believe that Christ was. Show yeah. me where Christ did anything that Moses done. Show me where Christ okay. did anything that David done. Did Christ... Show me where Christ did anything that Muhammad did. Okay, Christ agrees with killing of unruly children. Where? Matthew 5, where? 3 and where? 4. Where? Matthew 5, 3 and 4. No, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Read it. That's a parable. Read it, it's not a parable. It's a parable. Is that a parable? Yeah, a so parable. we got two Christians here saying it's a parable. A parable. Okay, if I'm a liar, right, let, prove, me, prove me from there. Okay, okay. Remember that they both... Okay, hold on. It's, no, it's not a parable, no. Uh, this is what we are saying, that the debate people who they are not really uh, well-versed. They are just young kids. Uh, but what about you? You are 60 years old, you, you idiot. And you don't have a shame to lie? In that verse, when it's speaking about... Let us go to the verse first and let us show everybody how those people, they have no dignity. This is Ma Matthew chapter 15. And what the verse is here is saying, he said three and five. You can read it from verse number one. It says here, but he answered and said to them, why, why do you, you also transgress the command of God by your tradition? For God commanded saying, honor your father and your mother, and he could father or mother, let him die, uh, let him die the death. This is what he is saying. This is about killing children. You are a stupid idiot. Where it says killing children is here. I mean, if it says that, we will say it says that, you know, it's not really a big deal. Uh, but why why they lie? Uh, saying things is not there. This is have nothing to do with killing children. You see, even when the Bible used the word, your children, the children who curse their parents, or the children who, as an example, in different chapter in the, in the, in the Bible is speaking about uh, 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 the one who do uh, in Exodus, uh, let me find it, Exodus 21, I think, uh, the, the ones who, the children who strike or hit their parents. Uh, so those are punishment not for kids, even if it's sometimes it mentioned the word child, but you are a child if your father, even if you are 19 years old, even if you are a thousand years old. So the dummy here, when he say this is about Jesus agreeing with killing children, is proving to us again that he is a stupid fool like his prophet. And you can read any translation you wish, it doesn't matter really. So in order to be to put to death, you have to be a mature person, you have to be a man, a growing person, and you have to be able even to strike your father or your mother. You see, uh, or when you are a kid, the opposite will happen. Your, your parents can strike you. They can punish you for doing bad things. But I never heard of a kid, he can beat his parents. Uh, physically, it's impossible. And if you do such a thing, uh, you know, as a kid, there is nowhere in the Bible it says a, a person who is a little boy, he will be punished for this. Even your stupid prophet, he says, Rufi al The punishment, and he was copying the Jews. The punishment is uh, lifted up from a three. Okay, who, who, what kind of a three this, those three are? The three is the one who is, uh, you know, crazy. Uh, the one who is so young. Uh, uh, the one who is uh, maybe, uh, you know, I mean, he is not aware of what's happening. So even your city prophet, he agree that a child, he have no penalty of what he do because he is not aware of doing that. And Muhammad always, he try uh, his best to copy from the Jews and to go with them. And if you go in the whole Torah, you will never see anywhere. It's mentioned that there somebody was a man and he is in the age under 13. 
or uh, uh, even 14. Uh, like in, I think in 14 and up, and up, a person he will be considered as a growing person and he understand what is right and what's wrong. Uh, but to say in there that Jesus agree with killing children, those are, this is a child of his parents. Those are not the children as kids. In the same time, as long as you mention this, uh, this is a proof to us that the Quran cannot be from God. Why? Because if this is the Torah, and this is the book of God, and God, he is ordering that the one who disrespect his parents should be put to death. And that mentioned in the Bible in many places, which means this is an extreme order of God. There's no way God, he will tolerate such a thing. How come we cannot find such a thing in the Quran? In the Quran, it says, don't say uh, off for them. Like, uh, don't say, uh, I don't want to do this. You know, but there's no punishment in the Quran. Neither a punishment in the Hadith of somebody beating or insulting their parents. In fact, your prophet, he did the opposite and he insulted his parents. And based on the statement, if your prophet, he said, if we compare it to Matthew 15, your prophet, he is a very bad person and he should put to death based on, that, based on the Torah and based on the gospel too. As you see here, Jesus agreeing with it. But this is a child of his parents, not a child. He's a kid, seven years old. I am a child of my parent, but I'm not a teenage. I'm not 10 years old. So uh, uh, fix your stupidity and try to think out of the box, the box of Muhammad, which is nothing but testicles and penises and vagina and virgins and shish kebab into heaven and hummus and, uh, you know, uh, barbecue birds. But if we go to what Muhammad he said about his parents, you will see that Muhammad he proved to us that he cannot be following the same God of Moses, because the God of Moses he have an extreme penalty for insulting parents, while Muhammad extremely he insulted his parents. Muhammad he used to go around and he he say with no shame that those who don't believe in Allah are najis. And this is in the Quran. If you go in the Quran, you will find, and by the way, talking about the children, the white children, you will see the Quran, Quran, all of it called all the Jews, Bani Israel, the children of Israel. But are they really children? This is your stupid understanding because you are just a silly person who is trying to make a point out of nothing. Loser. So the Quran used the word children and they are not the children. But because they are the children of Israel, so after many generations, still the word children is used. But for naive like you, or man, I, I think you know what I'm talking about. You know that you are lying, but in order to make yourself like you know what you are talking about. But look what Muhammad did. Muhammad, when he said that al mushrikuna najis, najis, okay, he just called his parents filthy. This is a chapter 9, verse number 28. Muhammad, he said, the mushrikeen, the polytheist, the pagan, the idolaters, etc. And by the way, he is he is one of them. He is a polytheist. He is a pagan. He kissed black stones. And he bowed down to the three daughters of Allah. And he said their intercession is, is a must. So he is the one. To, he's talking about himself, actually. And then those who don't believe in Allah, etc. They are najis. Najis mean filthy. Nothing can wash them. And those are the parents of Muhammad. This is why Muhammad, he says, my father and your father are going to go to hell. Why? Because Muhammad keeps saying that his father and his mother are filthy najis. Muhammad is born out of a najis woman. Muhammad is born out of a sperm of a filthy man. Muhammad saying that, not me. وَإِنَّمَا الْمُشْرِكُونَ najis. So here we notice that Muhammad cannot be a person who is coming from the same God, the God of Abraham, uh, the God of uh, uh, Moses, and the teaching of Jesus. For Muhammad, he have no problem to insult his parents and to call them najis. Not only he said they will go to hell because they don't believe, and here I find it very funny why they will go to hell if there is no messenger came to them. <laughs> Isn't it the Quran says, I will not send anyone unless I send you a, a warner first? Who is the warner to them? 
if the Muhammad and they say Abraham was there, we will laugh because the Quran says clearly that Muhammad is the first warner and no warner come uh, before him to Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> and here you see that this this dump Muhammad he say things which none of them make sense and thank God he don't keep you know he never keep his mouth shut and the more uh, uh, you know uh, the more he talk the more he do poo poo as you see here in, in the Quran it says it clearly as an example chapter uh, 34 verse number uh, 44 uh, that we never sent We never gave them a book, and we never sent them before you any warner. <laughs> and then the Sidi Muhammad, he says that Abraham was there, Ishmael was there, I mean, everybody was there. And then we find that Muhammad saying he is the first warner ever who came to the Arabian Peninsula. He is the first warner who have a book, and they never have a book. Remember, Abraham have a book. According to the Quran, Abraham have a book. According to the stupid Quran, Abraham have a, have a book. If you go in the Quran, you will say it says Sahafu Ibrahima or Sahafu Musa. You know, so where is so how you say Abraham was there and uh, Abraham have books, and then we find that no warner came to them and no books was given to them. Chapter 87, verse number 19. This is why those kids they try to debate only kids because they can look shiny in the front of kids but in the front of us we will clean their shine with our shoes we will make them more shiny but with our shoes the scriptures of Ibrahim and the scriptures of Moses and by the way translation of scriptures is not really correct because it's a suhaf which means it's written on the tablet like the tablet of Moses so here you notice uh, uh, how Muhammad he get himself busted in one hand he claimed that he is uh, a person who belonged to Ishmael and Ishmael he uh, he was in, Me in Mecca and Ishmael was a messenger and was a prophet and Abraham was there and then he says in the Quran no messenger before me came to them and Allah told him that in the same time the Quran says it clearly that Allah will not punish anyone unless he send a warner so why the father of Muhammad and the mother of Muhammad they will go to hell what is the name of the messenger came to them if you say Ibrahim we just prove to you from this verse that Ibrahim was not there and this was a fraud in the Quran because if Ibrahim was there they have a warner before you not only Ibrahim they have even the son of Abraham supposed the Ishmael so obviously this is a stupid lie made by Muhammad and this person he keep conducting himself at the same time I don't want to forget that when a person a Muslim speak about killing children you know uh, when the Quran as an example talk about uh, Al-Khadr killing a little boy and we made a video about it not long time ago you know uh, where he saw a little child and this child Allah he made him kafir in order to slaughter him A Muslim, he in the comment section, he said, "Allah, He made this child a kafir, so the so so Al Khadr uh, can teach Musa. It's like he's saying that Allah He made this child a kafir, so Al Khadr will slaughter him. It's like laboratory, you know. You go to school, and then they go, they have a frog, and they cut the frog for you to show you where his heart, where is his belly, where is his stomach, where is his etc. So the stupid uh, thing about the answer." Is they are saying to us that Allah he respect no life of a human being and he create people just for fun and he order killing them just to teach somebody something so here the, the hadith of Muhammad saying and as you see this is Sahih Allah he created this little boy from the second he created him to be a disbeliever but the verse in the Quran say clearly that this person did not never commit sin yet that's why Moses he said to Al-Khadr you are killing someone who is innocent he did not do anything yet and even verse number uh, 80 says uh, when when al khadr he answer he says for this boy his parents were believers and we feared he would oppress he would in the future here you see that islam is not only stupid islam is anti-justice islam is madness 
there's a God who will make you a disbeliever and then he will send a Muslim to kill you because you are a disbeliever. But it is him who made you a disbeliever. And not only he will kill you when you disbelieve, he will kill you before you disbelieve. <laughs> Which means before you commit your crime, if disbelieving is a crime. So when a Muhammad and he go and he make a speech in Hyde Park, I, I say, uh, bark, bark, not park. You are barking, my friend, and we are laughing at you. And in the same time, I have a question for you now, as long as you mention this. Where is the penalty of disrespecting parents in the Quran? Aren't you the one who talk about Muhammad that he followed the law of Moses? This is the law of Moses. How come Muhammad never mentioned anything about penalty? What is the penalty of rape in the law of Muhammad? Nothing. What is the punishment of beating your parents in the law of Muhammad? Nothing. Cursing your parents? Nothing. Insulting your parents? Nothing. Why? In the same time, we find that Muhammad himself was going around insulting his parents, calling them, you know, filthy, nudges, uh, dirty, garbage, you name it. And then we find that uh, uh, when, when the Quran says, as we showed you before, Muhammad, he confirmed that he is born of a filthy family. He's born of a filthy family. While the Quran confirmed that Jesus is pure and he was born from the pure Mary. So comparing what Muhammad described his parents with and how he described the mother of Jesus, you will see here Muhammad, he knew that he have no honor to be proud about. He knew that he is a son of a big pagan family. And he knew as he called him himself, not me, he called him you know, a, a filthy, impure, najis. And if a Muslim he says the word najis is not really that bad, what about you then you say to him, you are najis and you will see his reaction. Just tell him you are najis. Let us see how, how much he will love it. So the word najis is an extreme insult to anyone. And as you see, Muhammad, he confirmed that his parents are both of them a bunch of filthy people. So, so Muhammad, he never respected his parents. Muhammad, he acknowledged his parents are filthy and they are impure and they are people of hell and they are pagan. And acknowledge in the same time that Jesus himself, as we see in the Quran in chapter nine, uh, 19, verse number 19, where it says that Jesus is the Holy Son. And then we ask ourselves, what makes Jesus holy and Holy Son of who? Is that because he is Holy Son of God? Otherwise, no holy save God. A person cannot be holy. A person nowhere to be close to be holy unless he is someone special, that is God. So when, when the Quran come with this, uh, uh, with this statement, and the statement is so clear about Jesus, uh, we find that Jesus coming from a pure mother, the best of women in the, between mankind. And then we find that Jesus, he is the Holy Son and he is a gift of God. So you notice here the huge difference between the filthy Muhammad family and the holy family of Jesus based on the Quran words. And the Holy Son is born of what? Holy what? Where is the holiness coming from? Remember the Quran say clearly that Muhammad is a big time sinner. And maybe Allah, even Allah, he says, may Allah forgive your sin, Muhammad. The sin in the future and the sin in the past. Now, the Muhammadan here, they sometime in translation, they say, they, they take the word sin, they say fault. But the fact in Arabic, it says thumb. And the word them is so clear it is sin so even Muhammad he himself acknowledged that he is a filthy person that Allah may forgive his sin and here it's very funny if Allah is the one who's talking how Allah he says may Allah forgive your sin how stupid this statement is if I am God and I am talking to say may God forgive your sin Muhammad who is who are you then obviously this is a verse made by Muhammad and he knew how filthy he is so he is wishing that the God, the true God, not Allah, he will forgive his sin before he send him to hell and burn him for eternity. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope you have a good time. Uh, 
feel free to download the video share it with your friends and thank you very much may the bless you islam is false as always we prove it and again don't forget to leave your comment if you are a muhammadan we showed you that muhammad was not uh, he was the first uh, warner who came to the arabian peninsula which means abraham never came we showed you that muhammad don't follow the law of moses which is it clearly says if a man disrespect his parents or even he did beat his parents strike his parents curse his parents he surely put to death why we cannot find this law in the quran and why the jews even let us say for the sake of argument the jews you, you the muhammad and they might say the jews they took this verse uh, off uh, i mean sorry they added later you know i mean why they would add it later this is something silly i mean this is stupid to say right uh, it doesn't make sense. I mean, what does have to do? Uh, are they going to use it against Muhammad? But obviously, this is a true verse exists in the Old Testament, generation after generation, carry on. And this is a law which is practiced. And Muhammad, he never mentioned such a thing. You know, all what the Quran says that uh, uh, don't, uh, like, let us say, don't be rude. That's it. Don't. Be rude. Where is the punishment to death? Where is the solution if somebody beat his mother or his father? Hmm? Don't say to them, oof. <laughs> That's it. This is this is Allah order. So what happened? What happened to the law of Moses? Huh? There is no punishment. Say to them good words, right? And you see here, Muhammad, he is the first one who break it. He called his parents Najis, filthy, and he says he was going walking around in the street saying, my father and you father in the hellfire. Why Muhammad? Because his father is filthy, as Muhammad described. From their mouth, we get them guilty. Thank you, God bless you, and see you soon again. Take care. Bye-bye.